So today we'll be taking a look at 2021's question 2C based on rivers. Now this here is a physical geography question, which means it can appear as question number one, two or three, B or C. So let's take a look. Now before getting started, it's really important for you to take a little bit of an opportunity to actually read down through the question yourself and to dissect it. So let's have a look at this. Now, just a reminder, this obviously physical geography is called appear one, two and three. So we're asked, human impact or human activity impacts the surface processes. Now again, we want to highlight the word surface processes, circle the ES. They're asking us to look at the impacts on surface processes. Now surface processes would be the impact on either one of the three of the following. You have three surface processes, erosion, transportation, and deposition. Now the examiner has allocated two marks plus, plus two marks for the explanation of these impacts. So for example, there's an increased rate of vertical and lateral erosion after on the dam street side, stream side of the dam. Transportation, the dam reduces the river's ability to transport from the source to the sea or deposition will occur behind the dam where it would usually deposit on the river's floodplains. Now, either of them two explanations I get there would get us a two mark plus two mark. Again, not just for the words, but for this, those explanations. Examine this statement with reference to one of the following, so just one of these, and you might have already heard the hint. What do we have? The impact of flood control measures. Now, flood control in the river on the river processes. Now flood control measures on the river processes is looking at the construction of dams. Now that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So we're not going to be having a look at the second or the third, the impact on coastal defences or the impact on mass movement. These I'm going to bracket off. So we only need to study one of these. Now when we're looking at the impact of flood control measures, what might we give in relation to dams? Well, we're going to give our examiner an example of a dam. And there's a lot of examples to actually go from, but here I'm going to go for the, for the Three Gorge Dam in China. And again, that's along the Yangtze River. That there will get me an additional two marks. Finally, I'm going to pop in a little labeled diagram of my dam and how it works. And we're going to be looking at that a little later on. That's going to get us an additional two marks. Now, we have two, four, six, eight. Eight marks for what we've just discussed. That gets us to eight out of 30. This question is worth 30 marks, which as per usual, is 15 minutes of my time and 15 significant relevant points is required. Now, let's take a look at the essay itself. So here behind me, I'm gonna pop up a few of the key points along the way, not absolutely everything, but just some things that we need to remember. So to start off, dam construction or dams. So first of all, what are dams? Dams are artificial obstacles or walls built across the course of the river. Normally they are built in the youthful or mature stages, early mature stage, stages of the river, where the river is fast flowing due to its steeper gradient. So first of, first of all, I'm going to pop down, what actually is a dam? It is an artificial obstacle. Or obstruction. Now that obstruction really is very similar to a wall. Built across the river in the youthful or the mature stages. Now dams are predominantly used for what? Dams are predominantly used for the generation of hydroelectric power, HEP. Hydroelectric power is clean and it is renewable. It reduces the dependency on fossil fuels such as oil and gas. So the second thing I'm gonna pop down here is just HEP, hydroelectric power. And in relation to HEP, I'm gonna pop down clean and renewable. Again, there are just two important words there that we see. 
Hydroelectric power is generated. It's generated from the potential energy of water flowing downstream. The water flows through your pin stocks in the dams, apologies. The water flows through pipes in the dam known as pin stocks. The flow of the water turns the turbines within the pin stocks, which is connected to a generator. The water spins the turbines to generate electricity for nearby urban areas. Now, that really point in our essay is explained with our diagram here. So what we've said is water flows through your pin stocks. Here's my pipe referred to as my pin stock. Remember, don't call it a pipe, call it a pin stock. In the dam, it turns this turbine and that turbine is connected up to a generator. Which again, transforms that energy. So that point about HEP and how it's actually generated is explained there using my diagram. My diagram, as always, is worth a tick and two marks. Now after this, what do we have? We're going to discuss our reservoir. So water builds up behind the dam in an artificial lake called a reservoir. The water within the reservoir is used for a number of things. Urban water supply, irrigation, the artificial watering of land, and an example of this is the Ajwan Dam on the River Nile in Egypt, or finally for recreation or tourism. Again, an example in Blessington's Lakes in County Wicklow. It's a popular destination for fishing and water sports. Now again, to pop in here, my third point I'm gonna put down, and again, remember these are points, not your significant relevant points, my reservoir. My reservoir is my artificial lake. Now you'll see it over here in my diagram. Behind this dam, this water builds up in our reservoir. A reservoir, what is its uses? Or what is it used for? We mentioned three things here. Number one, water supply. Number two, irrigation. And number three, recreation. Recreation or tourism. And we get examples of the latter two. Now continuing on, what we know, dams interrupt the natural flow of the river, reducing the river's ability to transport, again, that's your two marks there, materials such as sand and silt from the source to the sea. Consequently, that sediment builds up behind the dam, where it is usually transported and deposited on the river's floodplains. The buildup of deposition or deposits in the reservoir will push water levels up at times and dredging will be required. Now here, a little bit of, I suppose, a couple of notes. First of all, we mentioned, and this is worth two marks, we know the dam reduces the ability to transport, to transport sediment. Now that point there is our reference to the processes of our surface processes for fluvial environments. That is going to get us two marks. We also mentioned here, it forces the river to deposit behind the dam, where it would usually be transported down to the floodplains. That point there will also get us another two marks. So here, you'll notice I label this in. This is our deposits. And then deposits sometimes can build up and build up and build up and cause navigation problems, which is why we say that it needs to be dredged dredge the water taken out of the reservoir, that artificial lake, and then the sediment removed. Now, after this, we're going to go on to our suspended load. Only some of the suspended load, again, suspended load is that fine particles of sand and silt, will be able to pass through our pin stocks, our pipes. This results in the downstream areas being deprived of alluvium along its floodplains. 
increasing the need for artificial fertilizers and increasing the costs of farmers. Now here, again, we're going to say floodplains deprived of alluvium. And we know floodplains occur in the old age stage. So floodplains deprived of alluvium, again we said the suspended load, the fine particles, sometimes is the only parts that get through. Usually downstream areas have a lower velocity. So vertical erosion and lateral erosion generally doesn't occur. Water that is released through the dam will flow in a faster velocity. This is due to not carrying much load and therefore will have, apologies, therefore will have a higher energy. This will cause the erosion of the channel in a section of the river that previously did not get much erosion. So again, what are we going to say? We're going to mention erosion and downstream. So erosion begins again on the downstream side. So the downstream side of the river. Finally, dams. Dams allow humans to manage and control rivers, allowing the flow of water to be regulated depending on the demand. Flood prevention is a key function of dams. And during periods of heavy rainfall, when the water table rises and the lakes or rivers swell. So at these times, the openings in dams are enlarged to allow more water to pass through, to ensure the river banks do not burst upstream on the upstream side. Now here, that's the last thing here. We're gonna make a note of before our example, and our example will be just naming. Our, what we're gonna say here is dams are used to manage and control. Manage and control rivers. Finally, the last thing that we're going to discuss is our example. And as you'll know already, your example is worth two marks. The Three Gorge Dam. Three Gorge Dam in China. And again, for just stating your example here, you're going to get back two marks. So finally, our case studies, Three Gorge Dam in China. The Chinese government built the world's largest hydroelectric power dam on the Yangtze River. The Three Gorge Dam was completed in 2012, and since its opening, it has affected the surface processes or natural processes of the Yangtze River. Now, we're gonna mention two positive and two negative aspects. Positive aspects include, the scheme has prevented the periodic flooding of the river Yangtze, which claimed 500,000 lives in the 20th century. Lung disease in China is the leading cause of death. This scheme has led to renewable and clean hydroelectric power, which in turn reduces the country's coal, coal consumption by 31 million tonnes per year. Negative aspects include the fertile alluvium, which would have been transported and deposited on the river's floodplains, is now deposited behind the dam. The building of sediment has caused navigation problems on the upstream side of the river. Our final neg negative aspect, the Yangtze River supported numerous settlements along its bank. And following the construction of the dam, settlement on the upstream side has, been dis or has disappeared under the reservoir. As a result, 1.3 million people have been relocated over the 17 years it took to complete the dam. Now guys, that there is our 2021 question to be based on dam construction and asking our question about humans' impact on the surface processes in relation to flood control and flood prevention.